Welcome once again to refurbishing a vintage model steamboat and this is part 10, finalising the boiler support method. This is the original boiler support and it was quite weak, it was only soldered together and I re-soldered one corner which promptly fell off again. I was originally going to use a nut and bolt system as well as a solder joint. So initially I drilled a hole all the way through in each of the four corners at the top and then I fitted a 10BA bolt with a nut on the inside. And here you can see me fitting the 10BA bolt. These are really small things. And when I'd finally got these all in place, I then drilled a hole in the bottom of each of the four corners. And then even more 10BA bolts were used on the second set of four holes. So the whole thing now is very securely fastened together and it will not fall apart when the bolt is in steam. Yes, maybe a tad over the top, but it's going to go nowhere. The main boiler is going to be secured to this base using some brass banding. Now that all the 10BA nuts and bolts are tightened and trimmed to length, what I'm doing is putting a spot of cyanoacrylate adhesive on each nut to stop any possibility of the nuts working loose. This, by the way, is medium viscosity cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue, or super glue. The copper boiler cannot just sit loosely on this base in the bottom of the boat. I'm going to fix it in place with two lots of boiler bands. Both of these boiler bands measure a quarter of an inch wide, so they'll be more than strong enough to hold the boiler firmly in position onto the base, which in turn bolts to the main base plate inside the boat. And now, by way of something completely different, it's time for a bit of surgery. What I'm going to do is cut this piece of silicone rubber tube. I bought quite a lot of this tubing off eBay a long while back, and I use it for various things. I use it for tying components together when I put them in the acid bath, and also it's very useful as fuel tubing for very small model aeroplane engines. But now I'm cutting this piece to use as a boiler mounting. By cutting it this way, it will form a combing that can be stuck to the circular part of the base, the part that supports the boiler, and that way the boiler will not be in contact with any of the steel. And the combing will also give a larger surface area for support. Here I'm just cleaning up the end bit, that's gone on the floor, and now it's time for a test fit before I stick it permanently in place. And as you can see, it is yet another very small fiddly job but it's best to do a test fit first to make sure you've got it right before you stick it in place and find out that it's too short. By way of a short interlude, I'd like to tell you about the time that I went to Wales. Wales in England is a very beautiful place. I went to a little village, which was a mining village, very much in the heart of the coal mining area, which of course now is long gone. On the first night, I went to the pub, and I was captivated by a man that I saw in there. I'd not seen many Welsh people, but this particular chap had got a totally flat head. He was very tall, and his head was completely flat. And furthermore, the side of his face and the entire side of his head, in fact, was completely smashed. And I thought, is this some sort of a Welsh gene I've never seen before? At that time, I'd never been to Wales very much. So I asked the barman, and the barman said, Oh no, I said, don't say anything about that, and don't let him catch you staring at him, whatever you do. I said, why? And he said, well, that's Mr. Jones. He's our local hero. Once there was a cave-in in the mine, and he held up the roof of the mine with his head. I said, oh, that explains the flat head. What about the side of his face? He said, oh, well, that's where the other miners hammered him into place with a sledgehammer. And whilst I've been telling you about my time in Wales, I've been sticking the combing in place. And I put the boiler on it for a moment or two, just to seat it, and now I'm doing the other side. And in exactly the same way as previously shown, I'm doing a dummy run first to make sure that the piece of combing is not too short and fits okay. And once I'm convinced that this is all right, it's out with the cyanoacrylate adhesive. Once again, this is called CA glue or cyano glue or even super glue. And this is the medium viscosity. Don't use the really runny stuff because it will run everywhere. So without trying to get too much of the glue on my fingers, I'm carefully sticking down the piece of combing. These two pieces of silicone combing will be more than adequate to support the boiler, and because the boiler is going to be held to the base by the two quarter inch wide boiler bands, there's going to be no chance of the boiler moving about and damaging the silicone seal. The final part of this job is to pour some cyanoacrylate adhesive down the edges of the tube, and this will give a permanent and strong fixture for the silicone to the metal. I've had to drill a couple more holes in the base, 
because the boiler banding using the original holes would have fouled one of the outlets. And in this clip I'm using a small drum sander in my mini drill just to deburr the inside edge. I find this small mini craft drill to be very very useful. I use an old computer power supply as a power supply for the drill. I think it's out of a 286 in case there's any computer buffs out there. And it works beautifully. I'm not going to fit the boiler just yet though, I need to give it another coat of paint. So here we go, this time I'm using some old precision paints paint that's actually gone a bit hard really. I wouldn't use it for anywhere else other than down in the bottom of the boat. I'm getting a nice thick coat on just to keep all the water away from the metal. Even though this is a piece of galvanised steel or did start off that way, it's been ground off in various places so I want to give it a good coating to make sure we don't get a rust problem. This paint is definitely past its best, it's an old can that I've had for a long time and air's got into the can and there was a very thick skin on top of the paint. That's why it's so thick and gloopy. So if when I've completed this painting I put the piece on the bench in the normal position I'll get some nice runs on both sides and I really can't be bothered rubbing the runs off and starting again. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of wood in the vise and then rest this base across the piece of wood so both of the sides are in a horizontal rather than a vertical position. This way the paint will not run. I felt obliged to speed up this last bit of the painting because I did feel that it was getting a little bit coma inducing. You notice that I paint up onto the combing, this is intentional to help stick the combing to the metal. And that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.